Hey guys, Justin here. Welcome to part three of how to make a 550 paracord stock whip. In this segment, I'm going to be showing you guys how to finish the stock whip, basically. Um, I'm gonna show you the plat for the handle and the foundations for the knots. I hope you learned something, here we go. All right, for the handle portion, depending on how long you wanna make this piece, We're gonna do 16 plat over the top of this. You could probably do 12, but I'm gonna do 16. So say if you're, if you wanna go eight inches, give it about two inches more. Double that over. And say, just for, say for instance, it'd be like 20 inches on each side then, okay? So a total of 40 inches, eight strands at 40 inches, okay? Now depending on how long you want to make this handle, I'm probably going to do about eight. So mark it at like seven and a half. Okay. All right, now I'm probably gonna sand this down so it's a little rough, so the, the plat doesn't spin on there. Just like that. Go up and down too. Need a better way to grip. And then take your, you can take your hockey tape and go around that so it's, so it has some nice, uh, a nice foundation to grip to, okay? So do that. Okay, we're using 220 sandpaper on the polyurethane here. Take a damp cloth after you get it all sanded down. I don't mean wet, I mean just barely wet. Wipe that down just like that. That way the paracord doesn't get the flakes in it and then turn it uh, Turn it white, especially for mine, because I'm using black paracord for this. So wrap that with uh, hockey tape if you want, but I'm not going to. The hockey tape would help, definitely, but. This part, you're gonna need eight four foot strands. Gut those. So hit pause if you haven't done that, which you haven't. Find the middles of those strands. <clears throat> what we're gonna do in there? Let's see here. We're gonna cross them. like that. Okay, you guys got them crossed.
came and looked at our bottom strand down here, it's pointing to that corner. So that's where we're going to go. You don't want to pull these hard because you'll lose your middle. Under four, over four on that side. Now it's pointing to that corner. Under four, over four. Back to point in that corner. Under one oak, oh, uh, under four over four. You gotta count these three on the top. That top one. I like said, so don't pull on these hard yet. Best way to do this is you're always going to have four on the bottom that's on the that's against the uh, the dowel rod. Just look at those four and go over those four. All right. Point to that corner. Get that top one. Four right here. Go over them. Point to that corner. Four right here. Go over them. Point to that corner. Grab your front four right here in the bottom. Go over those. Last one. Now we're to our standard herringbone. Now depending at this point, because everything's loose, depending on how long you want to make it, or you can move it up and down, you know. I'm gonna run standard herringbone for about, I'd say about three inches. Then I'm gonna hop into bird's eye pattern, then two pass diamond pattern at the bottom, okay? I'll show you guys how to do that. As you're going down here, then you can start snugging them down as you take each strand. As I said you should make sure you put hockey tape on this so it doesn't slip around. So just keep on slinging them down. Guys, we've uh, gone down about three inches. You can see there. All right, to create the bird's eye pattern, we're pointing to that corner. We're gonna go under four, over four. Okay, just like normal. But we're going to continue taking four, uh, three more strands from this side. Okay? So the next one line, 
Now we're going to do something different. Now we're going to go under one, over two, under one. Over one, under two, over one. Okay. Then take the next strand, do the exact same pattern. So be under one, over two, under one. Over one, under two, over one. Okay? And you have one more strand to take. And that's the easy one. That one is under four, over four. It's a little tricky to get it all set up at first, but once you start, it's not too bad. Okay, so we took four, four strands from that side, now we're going to do the same thing, but on this side. So under four, over four, next one from this, the right side. That one's going to go under one, over two, under one, and it's over one, under two, over one. Okay. Under one, over two, under one, over one, under two, over one. And the last strand, under four, over four. Okay. Continue that for about, I want to say, Go for about three and a half inches, approximately. And as you go, you'll see that it's kind of loose. Just snug those strands down, pull them as hard as you can. Okay? All right, I went about three inches down. You guys should end up with something about like that. Three inches from there. If you melted two different colors together from the, the beginning for your halfway point when we first started, then you'd get a pretty cool effect right here, but mine's in black, so. Now we're gonna trans, we're gonna go into diamond pattern, two pass. You guys should know that. That one's under two, over two, under two, over two. Okay? Just run that until you run off the handle. And I'll see you then. All right, we made it to the end here. The handle's right under there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bind this with artificial sinew. Okay, we did about 
two passes over the top of that. Snip it off. Just loop it right underneath like that. Pull it. Snip that. Okay, I'm gonna loosen this up now because that's done. Now, we're gonna trim all these off on the back here. So scissors would work for this, but I'm gonna use a razor or an exacto knife. Let's take all those off. All right, we trimmed off those strands that were sticking off the end. Okay, and for this, we're gonna melt these down. If you're wondering how big that piece was, about an inch for the uh, artificial sinew to wrap. Just melt these down. Okay. Everything looks pretty good. Okay. That's all set, so that's not going to come loose again. Make sure there's no like real sharp edges right there. All right. And This part, we're gonna bind this with artificial sinew as well. We're gonna trim that too. Okay, I bound that for about half an inch because once we put our uh, foundation for our knot right there, that'll all be covered up. So I trim these strands off next. Off the top, be careful though. About a sixteenth of an inch up, away from them, right about there. Okay, we'll do that. All right, we've melted the top right here. All the way around it. Now we're ready for our foundations, for our knots. This one, this is about an eighth of an inch thick piece of cowhide, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna measure About seven eighths, make a mark. Okay, we got our marks. Well, that helps you guys a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> Anyways, seven eighths wide. Straight piece. And if you're making two whips, it's good to go a little extra. That's what I'm doing right here. Let's 
Okay. Try to get that straight. Then, well, it's about a 12 inch piece, right? Give yourself a little extra. We're not going to need this much, but pick the one that has the pick the one end that has the, the most square end. Okay, we're going to put we're going to put one on the whip right now on the handle. I just got done rolling it. Looks pretty nice. The bird's eye pattern, like I said, if you use two colors from the beginning, where you melt them together and then plate it down, that'll really show up nice. Okay, the foundation for the front knot. Take this piece that we just cut. See right about there. See if that goes around nice. Meets good at the other end. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our artificial sinew, go over the top of this. At least start it, okay? Something like that, okay? Set it off to the side. Okay, we've wrapped our artificial sinew around there a little bit, just to hold it in place. Um, I have a staple gun that actually shoots brad nails. They're probably not gonna go all the way into the yoke, but we're gonna go uh, the four corners all the way around it right in the middle just to keep it secure so do that they didn't go in all the way but I get I got a hammer Kind of figured they wouldn't. So tap those in the rest of the way. Okay, we're gonna build up with the uh, artificial sinew all the way around it. But keep about an eighth of an inch from the edge, and I'll show you why in a second. Okay. So build that up a little bit. About eighth of an inch on both ends. Okay, snap. Mm 
pulling that back through just like that. Okay, snip off the excess or extra. All right, grab some hockey tape. You won't need a really big piece. This one's about one inch wide, the hockey tape. Cut about a five inch piece. Pull tight. See that way the that eighth inch that you left from the ends, the hockey tape has something to grip to. Sorry about the hair guys, I have cats. Okay. And that foundation is done for this one. Now you can put whatever kind of knot you want on there. I will show you how to do a knot pretty quick here. All right. Heel knot on the stock whip. This is 10 to 11 ounce oak tan leather. That's about, I'd say right around a quarter inch thick. So we're gonna go a little bit bigger back here. and about one inch from here to there, okay? So once you get that on there, try to keep it flush with the back end. This is always a hard one to start because it's it's wanting to go flat. So make sure make sure it's flush on the back end. Okay, we're looking pretty good. And pull this really tight so it stays flat. Just like that, see I'm starting to close that gap. Leave about three sixteenths of an inch from there because we're actually going to slope that a little bit so it's not so sharp edged. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the razor blade or whatever you guys got. Take a little bit off. Not a bunch. Continue around. All right, I've cut all the way around just a little bit off that lip so it's a little rounded. Now we're gonna take our brad nails. So it's gonna be one here, 
one here and one here. We're gonna do that to four the four sides and then right there and then one two three and underneath one two three all right okay I've set my brad nails all the way around it hammered them in make sure they're secure now we just go over the top Pull tight. Do the same thing. Leave about a sixteenth of an inch showing at the end here. Same as the other foundation we just built. That's pretty good. Call it. Snip it off. Pull tight. That's the end of that. Grab your hockey tape, if you can find it. There we go. So we're gonna go over the top of this foundation with like, you should just go about one wrap. Something like that. Okay. Look secure. Now I'm going to show you what you guys can do for the end here. Okay, at this point, you could use a concho. You could use one of those uh, paracord discs. But uh, I'm going to use leather for this one. I cut out a little small leather piece that's about an eighth inch all the way around, or a five eighths inch all the way around. So that fits in there in the middle perfect. So we're gonna glue that in first. I usually put it on the whip, but. Something like that. And for the glue I'm using, it's actually uh, Gorilla Glue, but it's their super glue. Works pretty good. Okay. Now it's kind of domed out a little bit at this point. And you get your next piece. This is just a uh, two millimeter thick uh, cowhide. Take a pen, go from the back. Give you kind of a rough idea how big it is. OK. 
Okay. Cut that out. Okay, we've got our leather patch cut, so it'll fit around the end. Take your glue, go round. Doesn't take much of this stuff to stick, so. And just press that on there, just like that. That way it kind of bubbles the center out with that smaller piece. You might have to trim a little bit where it overlaps a little bit, but not too bad. And that's the foundation. You put your knot over the top of that. We're going to attach the cracker to our final move. I didn't film the making of the Turks uh, two pass six by seven Turks head knots because there's a bunch of tutorials out for that. So the final step, I always leave the cracker for the last the last thing to do. Okay, we got that through. I can attach these a lot faster if there's any camera on me, I'll tell you that. Tight. I'm going to attach the cracker. I'm going to show you guys the final product of what you should have. Start with the keeper. Everything looks good. The two loops really beef it up in this area. That's why in part one I said make sure you guys use a one inch dowel to wrap around for the for the actual keeper loops. So because pushing that three quarter inch or uh, putting the thong of the whip through the three quarter inch hole that was tough so then the Graves Vine hitch. Looks pretty cool. Move down the whip. That's a 6x7, two pass Turks head knot. Okay. Then our 
herringbone to bird's eye pattern. If you guys decide to throw some colors in there, then it ends in two pass diamond pattern. Then the heel knot. That one's also a six by seven two pass Turks head knot. Be a good grip, or if you want to choke up on it a little bit. All that's left to do now is to test it. All right, guys. I'm gonna be testing out the uh, stock whip a little early. As you can see, I didn't finish the handles, and I've already tried whipping it, so you got kind of kind of the feel for it. It's a lot different than a bull whip, um, but I'll tell you what, this thing is super light, and the rod really doesn't flex much. I thought it'd be a lot heavier too, but let's give it a shot here. All right. very fast if you want to be I'll tell you that right now well guys I hope you learned something in the tutorial how to make it we'll see you next time I'd just like to say thanks to all the whip makers out there for all your hard work in making your videos. Without your videos, this one wouldn't be possible. So, And thanks to all my YouTubers and my family and friends, most of all my wife Jordan for her support. And there will be another tutorial coming up in the near future I'm going to make a longer one it's gonna be about a seven foot stock whip with hopefully two bellies and one overlay so I hope to do that pretty soon well I hope you guys learned something we'll see you next time